Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have an extremely beautiful problem for you guys today. Um, this is from the Shah Region Geometry Olympiad in 2016. Um, so I think that competition has been going on for a while, but it has only geometry problems, and especially in recent years, it's had a lot of really nice ones. Um, so if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so now I'm gonna go over the solution. So we have a triangle ABC uh, with in center I and circumcenter O. Uh, the line perpendicular uh, to OI at I meets side AB at X and meets the external angle bisector of angle C at point Y. And we wanna show that YI is equal to two XI. So uh, this is seems like a really interesting problem because there's not many problems that involve the segment OI. I think there's one I posted on my channel a while back with an isosceles triangle, but um, really there's not a lot of them. Um, so if a problem involves the segment OI and just a few other segments like this, it seems like it could be really useful. Um, and actually, um, before I found this problem, I was actually working on a harder problem and I couldn't have solved that harder problem. And then when I read the solutions in the forum, uh, a lot of them used this theorem. So this theorem was actually used to solve another problem. And it, it looks, with just a couple of lines, it looks like it should be um, fairly simple, but it's actually somewhat tricky. Um, so I'm gonna go over the solution. So we want to show that yi is 2xi. Um, so first, I'm going to start out with something that's, whenever you see an external angle bisector, it's always perpendicular to the internal angle bisector. So cy is perpendicular to ci. Um, and why is that? Um, it's because if the internal bisector cuts uh, the internal angle in half, and the external bisector CY cuts this angle DCB in half. Well, since both of the two angles add up to 180, if you cut each in half, then that has to add up to 90 degrees. So CY is perpendicular to CI. And we wanna show that YI is equal to two XI. So it makes sense. I'm going to let, denote a point E to be the midpoint of YI. So, we, so then we want to show that EI is equal to XI. Okay. And also what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to, so I'm going to draw the circumcircle of ABC and I'm going to let a point be the midpoint of CI um, just so that I can um, utilize the fact that uh, EF is the mid-segment of this triangle uh, CYI. Um, so since E is the midpoint of YI and F I denoted the midpoint of CI, then EF has to be parallel to CY. Um, so I just wrote that out here, EI equals EY, FI equals FC. So FE has to be parallel to CY and since CY is perpendicular to CI, EF also has to be perpendicular to CI. And so in particular, that means FE has to be the perpendicular bisector of CI, because it's both perpendicular to it and uh, CF is equal to FI. Okay. Um, so how do we uh, utilize that? Um, so this, so the next step I kind of knew to do just out of sort of pattern recognition, um, because I'd seen this idea before. Uh, it turns out that the, um, the perpendicular bisector of CI actually passes through the midpoints of arc AC and arc CB. So I'm gonna go prove that right now. Um, so note that the, the midpoint of arc AC is actually where BI meets the circumcircle. So I've brought this up a couple times, so I'm gonna draw it. Um, but basically, if we let BI meet the circumcircle at point G, uh, BI is an angle bisector because I is the end center. And um, therefore, um, angle CBG is equal to angle GBA, 
hypotenuse equal angles intersect equal arcs, uh, G has to be the midpoint of arc AC. Um, and I, I've mentioned this many times before on my channel. And we can do the same uh, with point A. So if we let AI meet the circumcircle at point H, uh, H has to be the midpoint of arc BC. Okay. Um, so I'm going to write that out. G is the midpoint of arc AC. H is the midpoint of arc CB. Um, but there's another theorem, and I'm not going to go into detail on proving it here, but whenever you have the mid a triangle ABC, for example, and you have a midpoint of the arc corresponding to one of the sides, it's, it's equidistant from the two vertices on that side and also uh, from the in center. So we actually have GC is equal to GI is equal to GA. And similarly, we have HC is equal to HI is equal to HB. And this uh, is just a sort of well-known theorem in Olympiad geometry. It's not too hard to prove though, so if you haven't seen it, um, I'd recommend trying to prove it. So I'm going to write that out here. But if GC is equal to GI, then that means G has to lie on the perpendicular bisector of CI. But we said that FE was the perpendicular bisector of CI. So if, if GC equals GI, then G has to lie on the line FE. And, and we can use the same logic with H. So HC is equal to HI, and so H also has to lie on FE. And if, if uh, both G and H lie on the line FE, then that means all four points, G, F, E, and H, are collinear. Um, so I'm going to draw in that uh, segment. Okay. Um, so we've shown a pretty interesting fact that all these four, all four of these points lie on the same line. Um, Ultimately, we want to show that uh, yi is equal to 2xi. Okay, so how do we do that? And here's where it gets kind of interesting. Um, so we really haven't used the fact that oi is perpendicular to um, the line xy. Um, forgive me if we have, but I don't think we have used it anywhere. Um, and so now we're going to use it. Um, but one thing to note is that whenever you have a perpendicular from the, the center of a circle to a chord of the circle, it bisects that chord. Um, so that seems like a good way we could use that fact, um, except xy isn't really a chord of the circle. Um, so we're going to extend that line and let it meet the, the circle at two points, j and k. And so I has to be the midpoint of JK. Um, and how do we use that fact? Uh, well, we can use the butterfly theorem. So this problem is a really beautiful application of the butterfly theorem. Um, but if I is the midpoint of the chord JK, and we have two other chords passing through I, so we have BG and AH, then if you look at where uh, GH and AB cut the chord, so it cuts it at, at points uh, X and E, those would have to be the same distance from I by the butterfly theorem. Um, so I think the butterfly theorem is problem four on my channel. Um, so this is what I mentioned before, since OI is perpendicular to JK, I has to be the midpoint of JK. Um, and then by the butterfly theorem, so I is the midpoint of that chord. We have two chords passing through I um, G, B, and A, H. And if you see where those two chords cut, or, or where the lines connecting the endpoints of those chords, G, H, and A, B, where it cuts segment J, K, it cuts it at E and X. So by the butterfly theorem, we have to have I, E is equal to I, X. Okay. And so now we're pretty much there, um, because um, since E was defined to be the midpoint of IY, then YI has to be 2 uh, IE um, by definition of point E, but IE is equal to IX or XI. Um, and so YI is equal to 2 XI, and that solves the problem. Uh, so I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, it's, it's really interesting. Um, there's not very many problems 
like I said, joining the ortho center to the in center like this. Um, so if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone.